Our final speaker today is Brian Molman. Brian is a Milwaukee-born, Los Angeles-based artist. He was the founder and former director of Los Angeles arts organization, Mila Art. He is the gallery director of the 50N York Gallery in the Highland Park neighborhood of Los Angeles. He has shown his figurative drawings at Long Beach Museum of Art, Center for Contemporary Art Sacramento, Orange County Center for Contemporary Art, Zaha Museum, and Insa Art Center. He and his wife, Mary Jean Mallman, also an artist, have two sons. His talk today is titled, Smaller Pieces. Let's give a warm welcome to Brian Mallman. So when I was younger, I heard a phrase, draw a line and follow it. And it really resonated with me because I loved to draw. So I drew my line and I got started on my life. Now when I got older, I got curious about this phrase and I looked it up. Well, it turns out it's by a minimalist composer named Lamont Young. But I had it wrong. The actual phrase is draw a straight line and follow it. So this was a problem because the line I drew <laughs> looked a little like that. But I got to admit, it's been pretty fun so far, so I guess I'm just going to keep following it. So I do drawings. And I, um, I've learned a few things from drawings in the process of drawing and learning to draw that have sort of taken me in some interesting directions. Um, that's what I'm going to talk about today, three things in particular. Um, I learned to draw in a very formal way, sitting on a bench, looking at a model. And while I was doing that, I realized something. I realized you don't really learn how to draw. What you do is you learn how to see. In order to draw something, you have to be able to look at it with fresh eyes. You have to be able to look at it like you've never seen it before every single time you look at it. And if you don't do that, you'll be drawing from memories and from assumption, and it just won't work. So you have to sort of play tricks on yourself. You got to look for the gesture. You got to look for the contour and the negative space. You got to break it into smaller pieces and try to understand how it fits together. And if you do that, you'll eventually learn how to draw. Now the next thing I learned, I was doing one of these kind of contour lines that goes around the outside of a lot of my figures. And I realized it sort of begins to represent the passage of time. The black mark that was going down is the past. Obviously, the space out in front is the future. But the interesting thing was happening at the tip of the pencil. Because at the tip of the pencil was the present. And I realized that this present moment that we're all in, that we all share, really doesn't occupy any time. It's just a transitional moment between past and future. And that made me think that maybe things that I assume are really, really big, like everything happening right now in this moment, could actually be really, really small, like the tip of a pencil. That was kind of interesting. Now, the third thing had to do with mark making. I realized that if I can be in that present moment and be there for every mark so that every mark is matters and every mark is working, that for some reason the drawing will work. And by work, I mean people will connect with it. Now, I don't know why that is, and it's actually not all that easy. But it's amazing and it's interesting. So, like I said, these things about drawing have sort of taken me in some interesting directions. Um, I live in a pretty cool neighborhood. It's called Highland Park. It's in northeast Los Angeles. And it's cool to me because there's just a ton of artists. There's a whole bunch of people doing cool stuff. And not only are there people doing cool stuff, but there's all these awesome spaces. There's pretty much any type of exhibition space you can imagine. There's nonprofits. There's pop-up galleries. There's artist-run spaces. And so I was, when I moved there, I was kind of going around to all these spaces. And I realized that each one was supported by its own little community. But in a lot of ways, these communities weren't interacting. 
So I figured, well, wouldn't it be cool to invite all these people together and just see what happens? So I put out an invitation. I invited him to my friend Claire Graham's amazing space. And um, I wasn't sure if anybody could, would show up. But a bunch of people did. And it was an amazing night. And we had some great conversations. We talked about art. We talked about community. And towards the end of the night, someone said, well, wouldn't it be great if we did like a monthly gallery night, just had everybody open, and we did it every month. And I jumped in there. I'm like, I can do that. I'll put that together. So that night, I'm lying in bed going, oh my god. <laughs> what did I just do? How am I going to do this? How am I going to pull this one off? So I, I said, OK, let me think about this like a drawing. Let me try to see it with fresh eyes. Let me try to look at it like I've never seen it before. Let me break it into smaller pieces and try to understand how it works. And I realized if I put together a map and a simple website, I might be able to pull it off. So I built those two things, and I sent them out to everybody to see what would happen. And that's when the amazing thing happened, because those people that I met that were doing all this cool stuff, they all came together around this idea. And they made it work. And they made it work so well that there's been a gallery night in Highland Park for almost 10 years now, every month. It's been pretty awesome. So the next thing kind of that I learned from drawing, after doing, I ran gallery night for six years. And I really sort of became interested in like, ah, uh, how art was exhibited and how people interacted with art. And I, I really wanted my own space. I wanted to explore these ideas. But you know, I have a house and a studio and a career and all this stuff, and the reality of that was pretty daunting. But it kind of stuck in my craw, and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, OK, let's think about this like a drawing. Let's try to understand it, break it into smaller pieces, look at it with fresh eyes. Like, OK, you know, an art gallery could really just be a space and a sign. And I knew where there was a space and a sign. There had been a, a gas station on the corner of Avenue 50 in York, but they tore it down. And they left the sign. So I got a ladder, and I opened the 50 in York gallery. That's it on the corner. So now. Right when I came down from the ladder, I realized there were going to be a few challenges in uh, running an exhibition space in a space like this, especially since I don't own it. And um, so I've been kind of tossing around this idea of like artist as spark, an artist as instigator. And I thought, you know, if you could develop ideas that were so interesting, people might come together around those ideas and make them happen. So I started making these like instruction sheets. And I'd put them out there in social media. I'd hand them out, put them out at the coffee shop, and just sort of get them out there. And um, I have about 20 of these now. One of the first ones was the Highland Park giant wind chime. I was walking around the fence that goes around the gallery, because I can't really go into it. I'd be trespassing. <laughs> and I realized, well, wouldn't it be cool if the fence was all covered with bells, so that every time the wind blew, the, the, the fence became a giant wind chime. So I put these out there, you know, see what happened, put them up on social media, and put them all around. And um, at this point, I wasn't really sure if anybody was engaging with this process, if anybody was even paying attention to what I was doing. But then bells started showing up on the fence. And this was really cool because. I realize now that I'm collaborating on this project with people, but I don't know who these people are. But we're making this work. So probably my favorite project was called Let's Sing Together. I love the idea of coming together and singing. And I was like, well, I kind of want to make that happen. And it was around the holidays. And I was looking at um, Christmas carols. And I realized that Jingle Bells has all these extra verses that I'd never heard before. So I was like, all right. So I put together the instruction sheet. I put it out there, sent it out. I'm going to see what happens here. And after that was all out, I was like, you know, there's a really good chance 
that nobody is going to show up to sing Jingle Bells with me on the corner. <laughs> so I told this to my amazing wife, and she said she would join me, and we could sing Jingle Bells together. So we headed out there, and when I got there, that's the instruction sheet. When I got there, there were people. And it was awesome. And we sang Jingle Bells, the whole thing, all extra verses, twice. And then people wanted to sing more. And I was kind of thinking, well, this isn't really the project. But I was outvoted. <laughs> I know. I was outvoted. And we ended up Christmas caroling, basically, on the corner. And I realized that by letting go of ownership of this project, the piece got better and was actually fully realized. That was cool. Now, by far the most successful project has been Draw Highland Park. I was curious what would happen if I just took a sketchbook and hung it out on the pole. And uh, what happened was is people drew in it. Like, lots of people drew in it. And so I realize now I'm collaborating with all these people, these people in the neighborhood. So I put up more sketchbooks, and more people drew in them. Now, you know, I don't even know who I'm collaborating with, but the piece is working, all right? And I end up with all these drawings, like hundreds of drawings of all different levels, all really cool stuff. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So I'm like, OK, now what do I do? So I'm thinking back about draw a line and follow it. So where does this go? Where do I take this? So I took this idea to the amazing people at the Center for the Arts Eagle Rock. And next month, we're going to put sketchbooks all over Northeast Los Angeles. So now, I'm basically going to be collaborating with an entire section of Los Angeles. And that's pretty interesting. So OK, draw a line and follow it. Where does this go? Where do I go from here? Well, I have an audience. It's going to be on the web. Who knows who's going to see this? Could be anyone in the world, right? So potentially, we could be collaborating with anyone in the world. So let's open this project up. If you want to be a part of this, take a piece of paper, put draw your city. I usually put a pencil and a pencil sharpener on it. Stick it on a pole. See what happens. So. Where does this line go? You know, I was thinking, now I'm collaborating with anyone in the world. Where does that go? Well, what if I could collaborate with everyone in the world? What would I do if I could collaborate with everyone in the world? And the first thing that came to my mind was, well, world peace. And I was like, I don't think that's going to happen. OK, so what about this? What about this? What if we divide the world in half? Half the world is Olivia Newton-John. Half the world is John Travolta. <laughs> and we sing that last song from Greece. <laughs> now, that would be cool, right? But then I'm like, let me go back to that um, world peace thing. Now, it was interesting to me, because that really was my reaction. That was my reaction. Oh, yeah, like that's going to happen. And that stuck with me because I'm a pretty idealistic person. And I, I believe in people. And I realize that if I've given up on this idea, if I've given up on the idea of world peace, I think we have a problem. So I was like, OK, this is a problem. Let me think about this. Let me try to understand it. Break it into smaller pieces. So first thing I'm thinking is, well, there's just no great peacemakers anymore. And well, that's just not true. Within a couple seconds on the internet, it's easy to figure out that there's a lot of people doing really interesting stuff. Not only that, but we have access to all the great peacemakers that have ever been, really, and all the things they teach. In fact, we can listen to some of them talk. And all their ideas are out there. And the interesting thing is, a lot of their ideas have already been proven to work. These ideas work. 
So in a way, at this point, world peace is kind of just a choice. Then I'm like, but it would take a really long time. OK, well, let's turn that around. What if it didn't take a long time? What if it happened really, really fast? I mean, really, is it that hard to imagine an idea catching hold and sweeping across the world and causing massive social change in a short amount of time? I mean, really, we've seen the seeds of this already. In fact, it's possible that something like this is going to happen in the next few years. Why not peace? It would be really hard. OK, but what if it wasn't really hard? What if it was actually really easy? What if instead of one person doing a lot of work, we had millions of people doing just a little bit of work? What if we could just integrate peacemaking into our lives and make it a part of our daily routine, like brushing our teeth? So it was just something we did on our checklist. Every single day, everybody just did something to make the world a more peaceful place, just maintaining this place that we live. What if it wasn't really hard? And when I thought about this stuff, I realized that we, us, everyone together in this present moment, we could possibly be the first Human beings could pull this off. We could do this. Introducing smaller pieces. This is my next project. I'm putting it out there to see what happens. And I'm asking you to collaborate. What is smaller pieces? Do something every day. Doesn't matter what it is. Something small. Put it on your to-do list. Just integrate it into your life. Make it a part of your routine. But do it. Share your ideas. Let's get more and more ideas out there so it's easy to find something that fits who you are and fits your beliefs and your ideas. Just share ideas. Now, the interesting thing about this project is it'll work. This would work. We don't need to ask for permission. It really doesn't require any leadership. All we have to do is act, and it would work. Thank you very much.